Here we have another root locus for this unit feedback system. The plant transfer function is 1 over 2s plus 1 times s plus 1. And we have a gain k when we are again looking for the root locus or for the representation location of all poles when this k goes from 0 to infinity. We can base this analysis on the open loop transfer function and the root locus will again represent the location of the poles for the closed loop system. In this case here, we have two poles, n equals to 2, and we have no zeros, m equals to 0. So n minus m equals to 2. We have an excess of two poles. Those poles don't have a 0 to go to. They will have to go to infinity. And when they go to infinity, they do so following asymptotes. We now need to determine the angle of those asymptotes that will bring these two poles to infinity. To do that, you can use the same formula again. Theta equals to 180 plus 360 times Q minus 1 divided by N minus M. We know that a Q goes from 0 to N minus M. So we have Q equals to 1 and Q equals to 2. Now theta 1 is calculated when Q equals to 1, and that is going to be 180 plus 360 times 0 divided by n minus m, that's 2. Theta 1 is positive 90 degrees. And now we can calculate theta 2 for Q equals to 2. It's going to be 180 plus 360 times 1 divided by 2. This is 270 degrees or negative 90 degrees. It's the same. All right, so now we know that we have two more poles than zeros. They will go to infinity following asymptotes that have an angle of 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees with respect to the real axis. Now let's locate the poles and zeros on the S-plane. We have a pole at negative 0 0.5, and we have a pole at negative 1. We can now count the number of poles and zeros starting from positive infinity. We go from positive infinity up to 0 0.5, the count is 0. Past 0 0.5, it becomes 1. We are now count we counted one pole. And past negative 1, we go to 2. So 0 poles and, and 0. So 1 pole and 0. 2 poles and 0. This is the even part. It's between 0 0.5 and 1. We know the root locus now exists between these two. And we know that these two poles will now go to infinity somehow. And the root locus on the real axis is between them. This means that they'll have to come together and break away from the real axis and go to infinity following these two asymptotes. We can also determine where that asymptote will be located. Let's call the centroid of the asymptotes alpha. And you know that alpha can be determined as the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. Alpha is sum of poles. We have negative 0 0.5 plus negative 1, so negative 1, plus, minus the sum of all zeros, there is no zero, so you can just write 0, divided by n minus m, that is 2. Alpha is negative 0 0.75, which is right in the middle here, negative 0 0.75. Now we know that the root locus exists between these two, it will break away from the real axis as 0 0.75, and we'll go to infinity now following these two asymptotes. So here is one of the asymptotes at 90 degrees, and here is the other one at negative 90 degrees, or at 270 degrees, that is the same. And now these two poles will go there to this breakaway point. and then tend to infinity. So here we have the completed root locus for this control system. 
the poles will come together at 0 0.75 and then become imaginary and go to plus minus infinity. When k equals to 0, we have one pole here and one pole there. And as k increases, these real poles will come together, become imaginary, break away, and go to infinity when k tends to infinity. One goes up, one goes down. Which one? It doesn't it goes up, which one goes down, it doesn't matter. So what can you conclude from this analysis? From the other two that we did, the poles would remain on the real axis. This one is different. The poles are initially real numbers, so the system is overdamped. The poles will come together at this point here at a given value of k that we will determine later in the following lecture. And at this point, when the system is critically damped, the poles now break away from the real axis, go to plus minus infinity, but past this point, the system is now underdamped. So as we increase k, we can see that we go from a overdamped system to a critically damped system, and then a underdamped system. The good news is the system is always stable. We are never crossing into the unstable region of the S-plane.